Hi everyone. Welcome to Scorpion of Venom Steady Games. I have reached my new goal of 2,000 subscribers and I'm currently at 2,031 and counting of people that have found this channel useful in one way or another, whether it's related to game development, cinematography of creating particular scenes for their projects, for their industry, anything that is related to Unreal Engine and entertainment, you are here today watching this video, supporting me, finding this content interesting. And the fact that I started this channel two years ago and I have reached out to over 2,031 people that have found this channel useful to them and that uh, has a purpose in their life. Uh, for that, I'm very thankful and grateful. And in this video, I will be creating a landscape in World Creator 2, as I've promised before. I've actually had one of the subscribers ask me to dedicate a video particularly to World Creator 2 of the Hills biome. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to create it and give it away. Now, the material isn't going to be included in the landscape itself. However, I will create a portion that will be in the World Creator 2 that is dedicated to landscape material itself. Uh, so that way we'll have the height maps and things like that of texture layouts on the landscape. And then from there, whatever you use, we can utilize that, the, that information that will be given to you. And then you can use any other landscape material that you're using. All you're going to need is the location of the placement of those textures, and you should be good to go. So let's go ahead and get started. Now here we have a world credit too. I am opening up a new level and here I'm going to change my terrain size to 2017 by 2017. And this landscape is going to be purely just hills. Now you can utilize this for whatever scenery you want. Me personally, I will add this into the game and at the end of the video, I will change it a little bit so that way it will fit my landscape that I currently have in the game development. So it will have hills, but around the hills area, I'm going to convert that and change it back to the ocean or I'll have a shoreline and it's going to go back into the ocean so that way I don't have to worry about creating that in the actual Unreal Engine. So here we have uh, basic generic hills. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go to our filters. Uh, as of right now, we don't need to actually add any, but I'm going to create. And here we actually going to add a layer. And this layer is going to be called hills. And we're going to click add. And since now we have it, now we're going to create an area which doesn't exist. But eventually, once I get to the end, we will. But since this whole area is going to be dedicated to that, I don't need to do that. So before we do any areas, we're going to go ahead and jump to the filter. So I'm going to click add. Here it's going to give you a different variation of different categories. And then these categories have their own filters within them. So I'm going to go to effect. And here you can see that I have balloon which we'll be utilizing for creating hill-like formations and before i add this i'm actually going to go to general going to add smooth uh, eventually we'll go through the filter properties and the filter levels once i add all the necessary categories it's going to have to click add i'm not going to close it yet because i'm going to continue adding so i'm going to click add so first we added the smooth next i'm going to add going into the basic erosions 
and here I'm going to add erosions. I'm going to click add. Then we're going to go back to the hills. Uh, actually, it's under effect, a balloon. So we're going to add the balloons. And then from there, we can go to hills and add the hills. But this time, I'm going to click add and close. So now we have these four basic filters that we've added. And I'm going to start with the smooth filter first. So before I, I change anything, let's just uh, kind of zoom in and see what it actually looks like up close. I'm going to go ahead and press put human for perspective by pressing H. So that way you kind of can get an idea what the landscape looks like from up close versus distance. Because the farther you go out, the much different look you'll get from a perspective. Now, these hills are a little bit too big. Uh, nonetheless, let's go ahead and jump into the erosion first. And here I want to adjust some of my filter level strength. All right, so within the filter level strength, you can see that we have level strength 2 through 32 at zeros, and then 256 and 1024 are also at zero. So we're going to change some of these settings. And first, I'm going to change the level strength at 4 by leaving the strength at 2 at zero. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 190. And from here to the 64 of the level strength, I'm going to gradually reduce this number. So we're going to go ahead and choose from zero, changing it to 150, let's say. And then here it's going to be like 135 for the level strength of 16, and then 125. And then you can gradually see how it changes. I will remain this at 100. But the next one, I'm going to reduce this to about 45. OK, so moving on to the next filter, which is our balloon. I want to change a couple of things here as well. I'm going to change my direction on where it's pointing at. So we're going to do it in 55. And the filler level is going to be changed here as well. We're going to increase some of these zeros to a different number. I actually meant to say 18 here. It's going to be 25 on level 4, 45 on level 5, oh, on strength 5. So this one's going to be 60. Seventy. Let's make it 75 by hand. Sometimes it doesn't really want to type in what I want to type in. Here we go, 75. Okay, from here, I'm going to switch back to the last filter, which is hills. I'm going to reduce some of the strength for the hills itself. Let's reach to the half of that, so make it 25. The rigid strength will be at 15. Minimum count can set 3 and 7 and everything else the same way. Now, the one thing I do want to change is the erosions. I don't want the erosions to happen at the top of the hill. Maybe they're somewhere a little bit down. So what we can do is get the observe tool and kind of get an idea. So you can see that by changing some of the settings, the hills already have dropped in height, or these hills, they quite drastically have changed in height. So we're gonna press human again, and we now she's at about 265 meters in height on this World Crater 2. And I think I want these erosions big in maybe halfway, maybe like somewhere down here. So that way everything else is somewhat still flat. And this is approximately 239, maybe 240 meters. Now I'll just keep it even numbers. So we're going to go to erosions, height select, uh, the maximum height. I want to keep this at 240. See that it changes the look and it's okay to have such abruption because 
the system is telling to have the top of the hill to be smooth because that's what we've added and have an effect of a balloon we still have effect of a hill but the erosion stop at that height so what we can do is the height smoothness we can increase that so that way you have a better transition I would say maybe add since it goes about the 240 right plus another 270 so it's a little bit over 100 20 130 meters there so we can do maybe 30 and you can see that now it creates a smoother transition and not all the way to the top but to 260 meters of height so maybe we can reduce it to 20 so you have a little bit of rougher erosion however it's still uh, has that abruption and gives enough for the hills to form with a smooth feel to it. And again, we'll still work on some of the stuff uh, to get rid of some of these ridges if we don't like them. I mean, this is all erosion. The smoothness of that will need to be changed. And uh, we'll play with some of these filters to see what else we can come up with. The cavities and things like that also within cavities for the erosions let's see what that effect gives us so if you convex that you can see that they are opposite of the original you can see that they kind of go off and then if you do that it does the other way and then if you do a concave it creates an interesting uh, look to it too which i think i like this a little bit more since we're trying to work on the hills more than anything else and uh, creating ridges like that might be of use for some of you guys but however it's not what i want to do uh, these erosion is a little bit too strong so we're going to have to uh, decrease them or smooth them out just a little bit more you can see that by increasing the amount that makes it look very strange so i'm going to decrease that to about six so that was half of what we originally had which was a 12 so here is another example 12 i'm keep typing in number 12 and it's doing that one look at that i'm typing in one <laughs> and it's not doing that one why is it not doing? is okay i see why it's doing that you can't type in very odd I was literally typing in number 12 all right here we go so at 12 you can see how less of a smooth transitions happening in certain of these areas so we're going to decrease that to maybe seven we go a little bit better now again you can see that transition of hills or the balloon effect and i do want to keep it everywhere because it uh has an effect on all the sections let's see what happens if we increase the smoothness of the balloon effect from point one to maybe point two it almost feels like it uh See what happens if we do point five. Sometimes the best thing to do is if uh, we do go back to original, put a human right here, and then from there you can see the bottom of the feet on the ground to uh, what it would do. Now, when you put letters in here, it doesn't really change anything, so don't be alarmed. So you can see that by doing that, it decreases. Uh, the amount of balloon effect that you get and it kind of drops down uh, sooner than it should and it's not as doesn't create that balloon effect as much so we're going to keep it a 0.5 i think i actually like it a little bit more because now you have this nice big hill and looking down and again remember this is 2000 meters in a meter squared so it's a pretty big distance it seems like it's a small landscape and it seems like all these ridges and all these erosions are very visible 
And the reason for that is because this landscape has absolutely no textures. So once you apply textures, it won't be as visible. And it actually turns out pretty smooth in a lot of areas. So even if you walk here where this erosion occurs due to a river, uh, not the river, but the rain flow. So when it rains, you have these erosions that happen on the hills and uh, they tend to follow the lowest point on the landscape. So in this case scenario, it's going to be coming down here, which means you can probably create a pond here or something like that. And then when it rains, the water will collect and then it will uh, run down the hill uh, on all these erosions uh, by creating these erosions on the hill. And you can see how nicely they all form from one center point, right, which is the top of the hill. And again, on this portion of the landscape, you can see that this erosion happens uh, sooner than I wanted to. Uh, there's a few ways of fixing this. If you're working with World Creator 2, you can either increase the height of certain hills, so that way it looks more like this, or you can go back to erosions. And here we can change it to, let's say, 210, so that way it will have less erosions here and then less erosions on this height as well. Now, the reason you can still see that here is because 210 plus 20 is 230, and it's still not hitting that portion. Uh, therefore, it's not doing us any good for the hill part. So I'm going to do go back to 240 to make this hill look back the way it used to. And uh, for this lens, uh, portion of the landscape, I'm going to go to base. And I'm going to actually change the terrain. So what I'm going to do now is click on custom base shape, edit shape. And here we're going to change this particular portion of the landscape. OK, so here we're going to change the level height of this hill that's one way of solving this issue and the second one is by creating a uh, area section for the hill and duplicating it and then applying it in this area so that way you don't have to have the hills of both heights or the similar height so let's say you want to have another hill that is shorter in height and have erosion being affected at completely different height so therefore you would create a separate area to do that. But in this case scenario, with this particular hill, I'm going to just make it higher just for demonstration purposes. So we're going to do level strengths from step one. It says 100. You can see that there is only a few uh, diamonds. So it's one, two, three, four by four. So you got about 16 of these diamonds that you can use to adjust the height of your landscape, either up or down. So what we're going to do is decrease it to zero. And now you can see that it not only has changed the landscape shape, but it also have created many more portions or these diamond so called shapes, right? The, that you can adjust. Uh, I don't know what they are. They look like diamonds to be double diamonds, uh, which then you can use to create the landscape that you want to. And it's okay that it does that, of course. You can do that in the beginning before you begin any particular changes on your landscape. The biggest and the most useful tool is the you just use a circle. So here you can adjust your radius of the brush and we can definitely fix this quick. So let's go ahead and uh, raise portion of the landscape here. And uh, you can also flatten some of it. See that by uh, dragging it around Okay, that was a little bit too much, so let's go back. Here we go. And again, I don't want to go too crazy on this. I'm trying to keep everything relatively the same height. Uh, some of it is going to be a little bit bigger than the other one, so let's go ahead and actually instead of uh, flattening this, we're going to move it up or down. So this is going to be moved down. 
Oh, this is going to be a move down, so that way we have on the edges of the mountains. There we go. And then we'll flatten some of these areas. Here we go. Now it's starting to look a little bit better. And then some of the edges of the map is just kind of going to go out into the uh, hills surface. So over here, this begins to look more like a mountain rather than a big hill. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select that and somewhat flatten this out between both of these locations. Now you can see that now it's starting to run off into uh, all one location. But again, I wanted to level this out together. And it's not doing what I want to, so I'm going to go ahead and increase this in height. You can see that it almost increases everything at once. Okay, so this is much better than what I was looking for in regards of the height uh, for that location in general. So we have too many um, sections here uh, that are kind of caving in. I kind of want this to continue on to uh, go off in this direction. So again, I'm going to select this portion over here and then flatten this out just a little bit. So that way it will uh, drop down some of it to continue to create that path. And then we'll keep this hill. I mean, we could lower it just a little bit so it's not too drastically high. Go. And then maybe increase this portion. And then if you don't like the fact that it's choosing so many, you can do a single point. So we can do one point at a time to create a transition between hills. So that way now they're all connected. And like this. And then because we've changed the landscape, we could change uh, the settings if we wanted to for the erosion transition and balloon effect and things like that so that way it's not too different from what I was looking for in the effect itself. So some of these hills again forming a little bit earlier on the erosion than I want to so you can always increase it in height have another hill for whatever uh, scenery that you're trying to create and then uh, we can always then flatten just a little so the reason I increase the height of it is so that way when you move from one sector to another by selecting multiple diamonds it takes the value of the highest point here and the lowest and it kind of creates that equilibrium uh, medium between the heights uh, so again all of these kind of going in all in one direction here uh, the entire hill remains at the top over here. And then a couple hills forming and coming down in this direction on its own too. So here we can uh, somewhat smooth out this portion of it. So you can see that it brings it down between these two. Go, flatten it out just a little bit. And if you don't want these erosions to appear, because, you know, it's almost no reason to have them there, what you can do is go to your areas. You can click Add Area. And now we're going to change the default name to Hills. And we're going to change the size of it to the size of this map. So you can do by just stretching it out. I'm going to do 2017 by 2017 since this was the size of the map. I thought this was the size of the map. No. Let's see. For some reason it comes out to um, being a bigger than... So it's about 2400. Okay. We'll do 2400. Just like that. Yeah, which means it's going to affect all of it. However, we're going to edit the blend map. And here I want to delete some of this erosion that's being displayed here. I'm going to go with the medium size brush here. See that the size of it is 128, which is not big enough. I'm going to change this to like about maybe 450. 
bit. And then what we're going to do is it's not going to be a brush, it's actually going to be a race tool. And I'm going to start erasing portions of this landscape uh, that is going to be affected by it. Now you're not going to see any changes yet because, again, the surface under the filters, we've never added the area. So I'm going to click on None, select Hills. And now you will see that this area will be affected slightly a little bit more by erasing. So that tool, that brush was not effective enough. I'm going to go ahead and erase some of the portion of the hills that I don't want to have an effect on. Uh, so you can kind of play around with it a little bit here and there. And what it will do, it will just give you a natural look uh, without these erosions or any of these effects that originally that we've created. So the only re only portion I really want to get rid of is mostly over here on these some of the hills. So that way it has a little bit of that look that it doesn't have any erosions, you know. And again, you can create a separate layer of the area if you want to and uh, give it something else. Now since uh, the entire landscape is just based on hills, that's what we're working with at the moment. Uh, but I will probably add a couple other things in here just so that way it doesn't look like only hills. And so I would like to add this to the game, uh, but most of the portion is going to be changed. Okay, so now we go back to our surface area. You can see that the hills are here and the transition now needs to be changed because the erosion is happening at much different height. Uh, we have the highest point still about 300, but this right here, the cutoff is at 260. And that's because of this. So if we ever to increase to 235 maybe, you can see that now some of the hill formations uh, go up a little bit higher here. And if we go back to 20, it gets decreased. Uh, which I think it actually doesn't look too bad. What I, I think the actual effect that needs to be tweaked here is the balloon effect. And the balloon effect of the height, we can try that. So that way the negative portion of it is not affected. We're going to do a balloon effect on only to maybe 240. Let's just try that for uh, the visual, see what exactly it does. So if you play, apply balloon effect to only one location, now it doesn't actually look what uh, I was expecting to. So we actually do want to have that at, let's say, uh, negative uh, 20. I mean, you don't really have to go too far because the landscape never goes into the negative. But uh, maybe we don't have want to have it that far down. So let's try to do a plus 20 and see what it does. Okay, so by doing that, you can see that in certain areas, it kind of cuts off. And we're going to do a gradual transition. So we're going to do 5 here and maybe 35 over here. Oh, not 2,000, 35. So that way it has that natural look still to it. Uh, 5 is definitely not enough, so let's do like 10. Okay, and then erosions, erosions. Let's do erosion. Uh, we don't want them to go all the way to the bottom of the ground either. I mean, it kind of already goes here to the bottom of it in most cases, but uh, what I would like to do is somewhat smooth it out a little bit. So what we can do is do maybe like 50, and then for the smoothness, we'll do 25. So that would smooth it out a little bit more and you can see that there's a better transition to it. And, and again, the more you play with this, the you know the more you tweak the numbers, uh, the better your landscape will become, the more you play around with this. I actually haven't used World Creator since I uh, last time created a landscape for uh, 1,000 subscribers. And here we are getting back to it and I've forgot most of it. So I even had to go back and watch some of my videos, which is really useful. Uh, if you are into development, I do recommend starting on YouTube channel. It's a good a documentary really in a sense for your own uh, use even. 
I do like the hill drop over here. Uh, it's uh, drastically exaggerated, I feel like. Uh, but we can adjust that. We can somewhat blend these two together so that way this becomes one hill. Um, I don't know what you guys think. Should I keep it or not? I mean, I do like this portion here already that it has this transition. I just don't feel like we sh need to have more than one. Um, but again, this is a uh, 2000 meters landscape, so it's quite large. Now, for the hills, if I were to disable that, and you can see the difference on the effect. Can you guys tell the difference? So here, let's do the height selection just for fun. Let's see what we can come up with. I'll do 200 on that. You can see that it creates this line. If I were to disable it, actually looks better without it. Now, what if I do convex on this portion? What does it do? But concave. I leave it at none. Sometimes you can do subtraction. Again, it all depending on the preference of your landscape that you're trying to create. Now, of course, when you do subtraction, if you do, let's say, convex or concave, it can uh, change the results as well. You can see that it drops here. I'm going to press a hue, put a person over here. And if I'm going to turn off the hill, so the human is completely under it. Do you see that? So it gives you a slightly larger drop on these hills, a, a bigger slope. And by increasing the ridge's strength, you can see that it uh, changes the height as well. So if I do, let's say 30, you see that the human is now under the landscape and because it creates that uh, hill drop. I actually like it. <laughs> this almost looks like a mountain, really. Um, but it's a big hill. It's a big hilly mountain. So it's not a rocky mountain, but... It has hills, um, but I think what's the most important part here is this. And again, if this seems like too high for you guys, we can definitely decrease this because um, I think a little bit exaggerated on what the hills are, right? So let's go ahead and do it right. We're going to move this biggest mountain down just a little bit because the height of it is definitely a little bit way too high for hills. So we're going to bring this up, and again, we're going to level this out certain areas. We're going to lower it everywhere, and then we're going to uh, use the filter of leveling it. There we go, much better to have a... Um, I didn't mean to do that, but bring it up a little bit back up. Sometimes it's a little bit too sensitive. Go. Maybe flatten this area out. Here we go, much better on the height wise. See that now this is more like hills. And then we have this uh, rough ground. So this could be uh, dirt or some sort in the center here, formation. Uh, but again, this is due to um, the cutoff of some of these filters. And the erosions, we could continue it. So let's do maybe, um, fine, we're going to change to maybe like 40. So that way it's still there instead of 50.
happened. Did I really change that much? Okay. The balloon effect is still in. Change that to 20. Yeah, we can actually do it now to be, yeah, you know what, let's do uh, 10. So that way a small portion of it is not affected. And then for the hills, we didn't do much here, balloon, erosion. Okay, so that's the reason why, because all of these landscapes are under um, ground. So if I were to turn the water on, you can see that now this landscape is underwater, which is fine. So I'm going to go back to edit here. We're going to increase the height of this just a little bit. Single point, because sometimes it's better that way. Here we go. Slightly increase the height of each individual point. And again, with the world credit too, it's very precise. It takes time. Uh, so don't expect to get this done, you know, within uh, 30 minutes. Sometimes it takes an hour, a couple hours, really, if you really want to dip, you know, dive into it and start creating a really decent landscape. Usually it takes three to four hours to create a nice one. And if, you know, you add all these different filters, it could be six to 10 hours if you really want to uh dive into it and create uh, some spectacular landscapes but of course if you're really good at it you can you know take a few hours and once you're familiar with how to do all of this stuff you can maybe even save some of the filters and from there recreate certain things again we're creating everything from scratch i'm not fast forwarding anything i'm showing you exactly how i'm doing this uh randomly throwing the numbers out there because the effect is always different i'm not too familiar with it you know, as much as I would like to, because I've been spending more time in the Unreal Engine than uh, World Creator 2, so so I'm a little bit rusty on this program, but again, uh, this will be added to the game. I will uh, change probably the outline of this landscape, so I'm going to drop everything around to add into my game. Uh, but this right here, I think, is a decent, uh, you know, map that can be considered as hills. And it somewhat might look flat, but uh, if you put the, the character down, you can see that it still has a quite different. So if we're to place a point here by shift click and left uh, shift left clicking, it gives you the coordinates and the height, which is in your center, which is uh, 95. And again, this is your like X and Y values. You can compare that looking at that. We have 1197 at the top on X value and 533 on the Y value of your landscape. And 95 is your Z value, or I guess in this case scenario, I guess, yeah, uh, which is your height. But uh, trying to understand uh, the Dimension. So it's technically a Y value looking from 3D dimensional perspective of where the height is, but <laughs> I, I don't know, it seems like it's a little bit in, I don't know, maybe I'm not reading this correctly. But the height of this is at 95, which is E, right, that's your height. And then distance is going to be um, over here. So the distance between uh, where the character is standing at is almost almost 360 well it's 366 meters from the ground floor over here and the height of that is at 11 so you can see that there is a, a big uh, drastic distance and the height differentiation between 80 meters or so so not too bad for the hills i would say right 80 meters of hills i mean seem Pretty big hill, but it's not uh, a mountain anymore either. Uh, there's few spots, of course, maybe like that one right here could be a little bit higher. And we can try that. So you can see that here, it's 270 meters in uh, distance difference, but 
and this one is the highest mountain and it's about 90 meters difference between those hills but the rest of the hills are not too high and then they're perfect i think if you look at the height of that one let's say it's 74 I drop down to five of the height so you have a little bit under 60 meters in height difference and you have over 465 meters in length which seems like a normal hill size to me i've personally have not really walked in too many hills that are just open fields like this but uh doesn't look too bad and then obviously uh, this portion of the landscape is not touched by too much of the landscape erosions and things like that but again it's still there it still appears to the water now to travel from this direction uh, either collecting in this portion of the landscape and again you know you can increase the height if that's the case but most of it will follow the lowest point again traveling downwards uh, same over here you know you can create a small lake here maybe another lake over here you don't have to create lakes either uh, it's just a suggestion so we have uh, this is a hill too so it doesn't seem like it is but since this landscape ends at 2000 meters uh, it has nowhere else to go but if you can look from perspective of the ocean level you can see that this hill still uh, continues on the edges of the entire map so there's a hill everywhere around the map uh, it doesn't go below the ocean level which is at zero uh, but i will be dropping this this below zero to fit into my landscape so we're going to create another island that will mostly have hills and this is how you do it this is how you create hill formations of course you can add other uh, formations other details or other filters if you want to and uh, play around more with it uh, but i found these four very useful and you know sometimes you don't really need to go too crazy into details uh, adding even more but you can you know there's nothing stopping you you know if you want to create some sort of craters you can do that if you're working on particular uh, scenery with craters if you want to add uh, something else to it like I've done with the sand and dunes, you know, you can convert the hills now into more of like dune sands. Uh, so there's a lot of different cool things you can do. Uh, but with the texture wise here, uh, you can add layers of different textures. Uh, you know, you can name it hill, so that way you know what it is. And an area that's being applied to is also going to be hills. And since we... Um, have the hill area already here you'll know where exactly it's going to get applied to uh, now this was just an example uh, i do want that texture to be applied there and again i'm only having hills in this level so there is no reason for this not to go in the effect uh, the one thing i don't like is that the brush strength is 0.25 so make sure that it's one if you want to completely cover it you can see that everywhere where I was earlier, the entire landscape is uh, covered in it. Uh, the other thing, cool thing you can do actually, is if you don't want it to be choppy at the corners, uh, you can actually take that and then erase around it. So that way the landscape doesn't get affected by the, the corners if you don't want to. Uh, but you can also do a, uh, I believe, a or is it um, right here border blend range you can change that and that will change the effect so from one you can like bring number one in you see how it changes the effect on the outside of the map which is nice so let's do instead of a, a one we'll do like maybe 85 or 0 0.85 not 0 0.58 said 85 here we go and now you can see that it uh, creates still same landscape but it does a smooth transition of where it goes into effect and it's not so slightly touching the corners of the map uh, which again you can adjust that if you want to or keep it uh, i will change that to 0.85 so that way it has a better transition anyway not unless i think we're done here uh, there are some uh, portions of the landscape that still feel seems like need to be changed i think like this right here Let's see, um, 
this is at the height of 50 and I think this oh I think it's a balloon effect that's being let's see maybe it's the hills so which one that I had smooth transition is actually being applied everywhere it's the erosion I think no that's not the erosion let's do balloon Height range, yeah, because it was so kind of odd. Let's do five and maybe like three here. So the balloon effect did not go on effect there. Just want to know what this artifact is over here. It's visual, but I don't really see too much of a transition uh, up close. It just seemed like from a far distance you have this uh, line going on going across here but I can't tell what that is so let's uh, change this back to what I had or a little bit even higher oh and uh, the balloon effect does go all the way to the maximum that I had which I did want to do that let's go back to the area hills uh, that's what it is it's the painting mode here you can see that that's what it was. I kind of thought that's what it was, but I wasn't really sure. I thought everything was already painted in here. So that's the downside about <laughs> editing your um, areas. It will do that if you're not fully uh, painting it. But I think it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm done. This is perfect. So next thing you would you want to do is open up your bridge. Once you're in a bridge, you can look for any particular uh, texture that you want. Again, you don't have to have mega scans in your Unreal Engine for this to work uh, because it has nothing to do with that at all. However, if you do want to reuse these textures in the Unreal Engine, uh, it would be easier to have them in your um, engine. Well, to, to have the mega scans in the engine because it will help you a lot in the future. With transfer, but for the world creator in general, you don't need to have mega scans. You only need this bridge. And here we can go to our textures. So we have surfaces. And since this is hills, we can choose grass, right? We can go for, let's see, where's our grass? Here we go. They chose a really strange color. They should have had green grass as a choice, but I don't know. So we have mossy grass, so you can choose whatever you want. Here's wild grass. Now for the downloads, choose the resolution. Mine is always at 4K, I don't do 8K resolutions. Uh, could be done for like if you have a small cinematography or something like that that you can handle, that's great. Uh, 4K resolution is fine. So download settings, when you click on that, you can see which uh, maps you're downloading. Uh, you have quite a lot of here. You have albedo, normal, displacement, ambient occlusion, me metalness, roughness, translucency, opacity. So I don't think I really even need some of this, like translucency and opacity for some of this stuff. But um, I'll keep it at basic at the moment, depending on which number I'm downloading. Again, this is for World Creator 2. The only really... <laughs> texture that I need in here is um, let's look at it the thing is just an albedo maps so when you click add this is for my previous uh, assets that I've created so I do already have a grass wild here I can utilize the same thing what I've had in my other landscape and again because you guys are going to end up having your own uh, the point of this is to I create a visual. So we're gonna go ahead and click add. And all of a sudden the entire hill is covered in this grass. Now again, don't worry about too much of repetition. Uh, this stuff can actually be uh, changed within the settings here if you want to. And I think it's under graphics, I try to remember. Try to see what it is. Actually, it's under textures, under general. Here you can do like tri planner, 
you can enable that eliminate tiling so when you do that it eliminates the tiling again this is for visual only this is does not get transferred into your uh, unreal engine from what i remember because again you're going to be using your own landscape material uh, therefore uh, limiting tiling is only visually uh, better for your let's say cinematography within the unreal, uh, with, within the world creator 2 so if you're creating some sort of landscape um, visual you know video that you're trying to make uh, within the engine itself here then it's very useful to do that uh, if not then you know you don't have to um, use it if it's not bothering you you know you can not use it uh, but i like to click on it so that way it looks good and i will be personally using brushify io as my landscape material within the engine and uh, i do recommend using it as well uh, however i've been having a lot of issues with it and uh, unfortunately developer have not been present to assist for a very long time uh, so therefore i'm debating debating if i am going to continue using that landscape material in the future uh, right now i'm not changing it because i don't have time to look into other landscape materials and um, been running actually a lot of issues with it so i'm still using it uh, there's nothing too much wrong with it it's just uh, i'm not understanding certain things there but nonetheless uh, this is how you do it uh, again you know you can change different you know additions you can add let's say erosions could be a different color so uh, you can apply that by adding another texture and here you can do let's say damp soil will be very useful so you're gonna go ahead and click add now remember these are layers so by adding more layers it's gonna look like this and the reason for that is if by when you click add and close didn't mean to do that we're gonna remove one of those and click sure we only want one layer the reason for that is because you have layer on top of another layer and what you want to do is you want to tell this layer to be like hey i want this layer to be particularly right under the erosions or you know some something that is not covering the entire hill surface here so i'm gonna ch oh the other thing i was gonna say uh i do recommend changing the names of your tags uh, so i'm gonna do grass wild as well you can do uh, by layers so you can say layer one actually like this layer oh one so you know that it's your first layer uh, same with this one layer two uh, for the tile sizes you can play around with it you can make them smaller and uh, the tile size in general does not go in effect when you transfer to unreal engine so that is again is part of the engine you know tool that you can just tweak here and then do the same thing within the landscape material that you create so changing tile size is great but it's useless if you are <laughs> have to do the same thing in the engine it's only good for you like use useful for visual uh, demonstration purposes so i'm going to use uh, i believe height gradient we're going to see um actually weight gradient i believe right strength Let's see it doesn't do much effect yet um what i want to do is flow enabled i believe there we go you can see that now it follows the flow well in this case there is our water right uh, to where the water is going to come down to or come from uh however it's quite large i want to make it a little bit smaller so that only portions of it affected and you can see that the water factor water smoothness and things like that uh, go in the effect as well i have no idea what they do yet so <laughs> let's go ahead and click it so the the higher the number the more of that effect uh taking place so by smoothing it out i don't know if you gotta get closer to see that it has no effect whatsoever on that end but um, the range is what i want to change so let's bring this in here we go you see by bringing that in it makes it less 
but at the same time smooth we want to smooth it out so you see how thick or how smooth it becomes i kind of want it to be smooth but the flow to be a little bit thin okay so that way we have uh, certain portions of the landscape that do have it and certain portions that don't and again then you can use this as your uh, pathway or some sort uh, where you know you have roads because usually you don't have roads going up the hill uh, roads usually go between the hills and again you can play around with it and do whatever you want see why it's so dark here okay so the reason that it's so dark over here is because there's no um, hill effect and again we can change that or we can tell the layers so if I were to uh, duplicate that I'm gonna tell the second layer to be none you see that so that's how you fix that so what it does here is Let's disable it and enable it. See, it doesn't uh, have an effect on... I wonder why the textures don't disappear on me. It's easy. Oh, it's because I have both of them on. Okay. So, by turning one on... Uh-huh, now it works. Okay, that was very strange and that it didn't populate to begin with. So, let's uh, remove this now. Yeah, I'm sure. No, come back, here we go, one. That was a very strange behavior of the program. I don't know why I did that to begin with, uh, but we did fix it by adding it and you know, deleting it again. Uh, the point here is that I'm trying to make is that I actually, here, see the difference? So you don't even have to create a new one. So if you just say none, it will just go in effect for both of them. And the reason for that was because we told the landscape that we don't want the hills to be everywhere affected. There was 85% hills in here and everything else on the outside of the 85% is no longer considered as hills. So therefore the texture is not gonna count for that area. So when I click hill, the 85% is within the center of the map. You can see that. And the outline over here does not consider the hill at 800%, it considers at 85%, therefore the texture now is barely visible. It's still there, but it's not full like you want to. So you can go, just go ahead and say none for that section. But this one right here, uh, it can only maybe, let's say, be applied to just the hills. And because of that, it uh, changes. Hmm. What you'll have to do is add another layer we can name this layer dirt. And from there, we're gonna select this one and we're gonna two layer, move it to dirt. And dirt layer is gonna say hills or none. And the hill is gonna say none as well. Uh, dirt is spelled with a capital I there. So it's dirt. Now I want to change the back to hills. Here we go. So now what it does, it doesn't go in effect too much on the edges of the map. It's like slightly visible, kind of not there. Uh, but it does go in effect everywhere else. And it's exactly what I wanted. Uh, so that way we can just focus on these erosions in the center and then just not to worry too much about on the edges of the map. Because at the end of the day, it's for you to decide what you do want to do with the edges of the maps there. Uh, here, and we can change a couple more things. So again, I uh, think I might increase this just a little bit because it seems like it's too small. Uh, and again, in order to compare this, going to drop a human in there. You can see that uh, there is few sections here and there. So we'll create a little bit bigger transitions. And I think you can do a couple things. So uh, number one, we can decrease the starting point if we want to. So if we go to height again selection, 
Uh, we can tell it not to form in certain areas and in certain areas it, it can. Um, I don't really want it to be everywhere like that so you can just have it between portions of the landscape so I'm going to give you an idea. So say the 35 and then maybe 20. Here we go. So it kind of runs off and it um, doesn't look too bad in the center because I don't really want the whole landscape to be uh, just a straight path of that texture. Same thing going up the hill, you know, you can do maybe 250 and then, well, actually, let's see what's the highest I forgot. Oh, we don't even have that highest of the point. I forgot we changed that. So let's do like 80 with 15 going up, Fine, maybe 20. And then uh, the height range is not at two. It will be at about 50, not 50. Let's do uh, 35, 15. Here we go. So now you have a smoother transition for these hills. And it's still going to be grassy in most of the areas. And then you can even do noise. So that way it's not like a straight path because it doesn't look natural. You can see that by selecting that. Uh, the world size, it kind of depends on what how you want to create it. So you can create a much better transition. Uh, look something like this. So you have patches of grass and certain areas. Again, you know, depending on the texture there, really. So if you go back to a thousand, so I'm gonna do like maybe 150 because I think it will create this. A broken up portion of the grass trying to grow back but at the same time follow the path of uh, the erosions and to give you kind of idea on what these textures would look like on the actual landscape in your unreal engine you can see that i have a similar technique and setup of some of the textures breaking up in certain areas so we have this grass type we have a little bit of sand and then in certain spots, we have little portions of rock formation sticking out. Now, this is in the Unreal Engine 5, so I have a few errors still enabled, and uh, those will be fixed in the future videos. But for demonstration uh, for texturing placement, you can see that by using Brushify IO, I've used the grass type um, layouts here to populate these textures. And then if we give it enough time, I just loaded this level in the uh, world composition. You can see that now it's loading up the chunks. And once it's done, you'll see that the texturing layout is not too concerning on the way it looks in the world. Uh, what do you call it? The world creator too. Because once you add your static meshes or your grass types, you can see that it populates it quite well. I'm going to get a little bit closer. And you can see that even with the transition in between the plants and things like that and rock formations, uh, the texture is just becoming a background. And again, uh, there is a lot of tweaking that needs to be done since uh, my memory has been exhausted on the budget here. And this is all with the the new setup, oh, we're going to be changing a lot of stuff here and fixing the world composition and changing it to world partition. We'll see how that goes and uh, a lot of tweaking that needs to be done. But the idea is to set up the textures in a way where the, po uh, the population of these grass types will be based on your texture. And of course, some of the slopes are untouched depending on your blueprint. For your grass types, they will only be populated on a particular slope angle. Uh, but you can see that uh, from far distance, uh, you're not really paying too much attention to the texture itself, but rather where these grass types will be populated. And uh, same applies in the world composition. That's the other thing. Uh, well created. And that's the, the reason that uh, my memory is being all utilized and uses because 
I'm running three programs. I'm recording my screen. I'm running a world creator, which doesn't take too much of the memory, but mostly it's the Unreal Engine itself uh, utilizing almost 70 plus percent of my uh, members of 15 thousand megabytes and uh, I'm gonna cancel the autosave but you can see again how the slope does not get affected in certain areas and again it's due to the brushify IO setup of the blueprints uh, but same applies underwater so if you were to go closer to the shoreline go completely underwater I don't know if uh, this level goes beyond that yeah a little bit it does a little bit so so if you're working on something that is ocean related you can see that uh, this applies to the sand and different uh, seaweed and things like that I'm not sure why it's uh, going on a, in and out and that texture we'll have to dive into that soon I haven't had a chance to work with World Creator 5 yet uh, Unreal Engine 5 by using World Creator 2 uh, but over here again you can see that it hasn't loaded up anything either and again it should be smoother once I redo all the world composition and things like that the, the summoning and probably changing the, some of the LOD levels uh, but again it's just simple textures layout and uh, it's almost similar to what I'm trying to create here so far to maximize this similar concept so you can def choose which textures you want to use where different grass types to populate these textures so for some of these slopes so for the hills we'll put some stone texture formation so that way you can uh, drop your rocks on it as well just like I do over here and then you can add your bigger static meshes for different slope formations and um, again I still want to rework my grass types for the rocks I have quite a lot of new ones that I want to add and change some of the other ones it's definitely lagging quite a lot but um, hopefully we can get that fixed soon so by placing some of these rock formations here we can utilize that and uh, save that for your texture height maps and then use them for your uh, landscape for your height map of your landscape once you set it up through landscape so when you go to your landscape mode on paint you can see that these grass types by right clicking you can import or export file of your height map and then from there it will do and copy uh, the setup that we have there so I'm going to go ahead and close this project and then get back into world creator 2 going back to our textures and then you can see that we have different layers so if we add another one and we're gonna name it rocks I'm gonna click add the texture here we can use one of the textures that I already had so we can do one of those it's going to be more of like a broken down stone formation actually should have done add and close but the tags and, and naming and all that stuff uh, that can be ch should be changed as you're working with it oh, I did it twice so I'm going to go ahead and remove that and going back I just want to make sure it says layer 2 layer 1 is going to say layer 3 I think that's how I named them right okay forgot the underscore here just like this and in order for this to change let's see what's going to happen by moving it up all the way to the top Oop. So we have rock all the way at the top, hills in between, hmm. 
we have dirt hill and then okay so the area is going to be on hills and then here we're gonna change the strength can remain extra at one for now i'm gonna tell where to spawn so on concave portion of the landscape Uh, let's see, sediment surface 1, by 0 I mean, 1, 2, 3, so I'm going to keep it at none. Step size, so you can change the step sizes, we're going to reduce this, and if you get closer you can see that there's just broken down rocks. Uh, flow enabled, if you do that, you can see that it disappears from the top of the actual hills but if I were to change this range you see that it uh, creates these um, so I wonder if I do this to like say 20 or 200 20 and then this one to let's say maybe 1 to 5 Okay, now we gotta make sure that this still shows the dirt. Here we got dirt and rocks. So the only thing about the rocks now is that they are full. And you wanna change the steps. You can see that it kinda goes away. But then step size is it's what's going to change the randomness of this. You can do a mixture of broken stone and dirt in between. And then you can do strength. So at zero you don't see anything. Sometimes they don't actually do much, so it's like, as soon as you set to 1, it, that's all you need to do. I think depending on where it's located at, um, follow the sun, it, what it will do will get rid of all of the shadow locations, so you can see that it will only be v visible from like one location or direction. I don't recommend using that for some of the textures, like this one. Uh, noise select, you can do that one as, as well. Noise select is what we used earlier for the other texture. And then factor high, you can see that it can change. Kind of does its own thing here. Um, so by selecting again, it gets rid of some of the patches. See what the roughness does, because I have. I'm not going to use the roughness for this. However, we'll leave this texture. And again, you can use um, the rock information, the broken down rock pieces for. Well, it doesn't have to be that. You know, you can put your different type of a rock formation from Quixel Mixer and then put your own rocks here. And then where the mud is, you can put like chunks of mud and maybe a particular grass types growing. And then over here, you can actually have larger, you know, big grass types and then uh, more dense and populated. So again, uh, from, you know, this kind of looks strange, but once you start populating with the particular grass types, it doesn't look too bad at all. I'm going to save this as is. Um, 
The other thing I was going to say is I'm going to add another one. And that one is going to be rock cliff. Going to be layer four. Add and close. Now this one, you can see that it's still under rocks. I was actually going to create under um, its own. So I'm going to just add a layer. Let's see, we're going to name it. Let's just name it cliffs. Yeah, cliffs, area to over the hills. Add. Actually, um, back, we don't need to add anything here. So I'll show you how you can two layer. So you can do this way. And then from here, you can navigate this. We're going to do height select. Let's do like 25. Not negative, positive 25. I don't want to have it on the actual ground. So starting from the height 25 and then break it down maybe to like 10. So there's a smoother transition, maybe five. And then I was to the top, we'll do So this is about 112, so let's do maybe 90. I just don't want to have it all the way to the top. And then we add additional 10. Let's do 25, like that. So that way the top of the hills are completely open and exposed. And Oh, I forgot, this is the highest point on 200. So let's do 190 or 175. Okay, just like that. Noise select. We're going to do convex this time, so that way it will highlight all the areas where it kind of falls off uh, again without the heat map you can see what it looks like again this is just too much of texturing uh, once you get into the actual landscape material that you create you can get rid of uh, the tiling but we're going to change that as well we're going to reduce the size of it so step size you can see that by creating more or less, I'll zoom out to give you a better view. We'll create more of a, like a thin layer at two. This one kind of outlines, make it thicker or thinner. So we're going to do about four or 3.5. Oh, it's at 3.5 and then Look around to see, make sure that it kind of grabs everything we want. Strength, you can increase it or, you know, lower it. So we'll do about 10. So it's the definitely visible in certain spots. Since it's hills, we don't want to go too crazy on this. And then if we click flow enabled, it kind of gets rid of most of it. So we don't want to do that. Uh, all right, uh, world noise. Somewhere around here, it looks like it just shifts most of the texture. Let's zoom back out. The scale, I think, changes. You can see that now there's a break in points. I think that should do it. One more thing we're going to add is another type of grass texture since we only have one. So where it says hill, we're going to go ahead and add another texture to it. And we're going to go ahead and choose grass while fern so that way I don't have to go through it looking and adding a new one. 
you can change that again. All of these can be changed as you set them up. So this is going to be layer 05. Actually, one, two, three, four. All right. Close. And we're going to leave it as grass wild. Don't understand why it added twice. I only clicked once. Actually, no, that, that's correct. That's going to be a grass wild five. And it then saved the name anyway. So layer underscore five. Okay, just like that. And what we're going to do is make sure that it doesn't show up everywhere on the grass. We're going to go ahead and choose. First, we'll start with a noise select to randomize it. And now you can see that it's already changing the locations that it's going to appear, but I don't like the world size. So we're going to decrease it. So let me go ahead and zoom out. You can see how it changes. So now you have batches of different grasses appearing everywhere. And the scale, something like this. So that way you have two different type of grass growing. And if I turn that off, you can see that you have a normal grass, a fern, and again, you can replace this with whatever you want to. Technically, for all the textures, it doesn't have to be exactly what I have here. So if you don't like it, that it's rocks here, you can replace it with a, you know, something else. Could be just mud, it could be snow, uh, it could be anything really. It's just as long as it fits, the idea is here is to give the layers locations, and then from there you can choose whichever material you want, or landscape material that you desire from Magascans. And now that we have this landscape, I think I consider this to be complete. I'm going to go ahead now and export this landscape and the textures. I will upload this to Google Drive where you'll be able to download this and then utilize this information. And I already do have a tutorial on how to import this, but if you do want to see how I'm going to import this particular landscape, I'm going to make a separate video since I'm already pushing into an hour and a half of the video here. And then oh, from there, you can see how it's done separately. And what I'm going to do after I upload this, I'm going to change the corners of this map so that way it matches my landscape with the ocean. Um, but I consider this landscape Pretty much done for the hills. What do you guys think? Doesn't look too bad, right? With the character being placed right here. You can see how high hills are appearing over in the background. Some of them are almost turning into back, uh, mountains. And if we were to look at the hills from first person perspective or close to it, <laughs> you can see her mouth and the eyes in there. But that's what it would look like from the first person perspective about this height moving out into the landscape and it has a pretty good smooth transition you can see that uh, these textures from far distance look a little bit choppy but once you get up close it has a decent transition and again you can utilize this and then create whatever else you want again some of the stuff you have rock formations let's see where it is right here appearing and uh, if you have a triplan or you can set that up for your landscape material too but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that next let's go ahead and go to export actually before we do that i'm gonna go ahead and save this So under the surface for the terrain height map, the format is going to remain at raw at 16 bit. Game engine for Unreal. 
going to uh, flip the Y. I'm also going to split that. Going to get split to 505 and 505. Now our Z value for the scale is at 4364. So make sure when you do download this landscape and you scale your landscape on the Z value, make sure it's set to 4364. That's your number. Next, we're going to export this. And I'm going to export this into the Hills project. Uh, all the height maps. So under the hills, I'm going to create a new folder. And this is going to be our landscape height map, which is going to be very useful as well, because if you um, need to, I think you can, well, what I'll do is I'll, I might just drop the project itself in the world Carter too, because if you are using Oceanology, in the future, you're going to need to use the height map of your entire landscape uh, to set your ocean. If you're well, if you're going to be using any ocean, so this is the hills. There's obviously no water, but if you do end up changing some of this landscape and converting to the more of like an island or partial lake uh, on the side of the map, you'll need to uh, have the entire landscape height map uh, texture to create a shoreline for your uh, water. Either it's a lake or ocean. So here we're going to go ahead and save that. It's going to export and you can see that there's a bar filling in. Once that is complete, it will be done. And next you want to go ahead and go to textures. Here we're going to select our type, which is not going to be splat map, but rather it's going to be changed to textures. but it's going to be under your heat maps, I'm sorry. And under filter, we're going to do textures because that's what your heat map were, were, right? So we're going to do toggle heat maps. When you are working with textures, let's see if I click this one. See, uh, under here. So these are your heat maps. So that's everything that's in red. Let's go back to the export. Uh, so you don't want to export the textures. Uh, there's because there will be downloaded in your folder separately in Megascans or already in your Unreal Engine. So we don't need to do that. Uh, going back to the heat map textures, I'm going to keep it PNG. Make sure you flip your global Y because we're flipped our landscape. So you do that as well. And for all your layers, you want to do layer one, uh, five, two, three, and then default. So let's go back and change the names of them. So that way you can follow them properly. So we have layer one, two, three, four, and five. So layer five is level uh, layer two. Then we have layer three as a layer two. Layer four. And then layer five. Okay, so now when you go back to your export, they're all under a numerical tag name. And we're going to go ahead and export this as well. We can do this under the hills. And then we're going to create a new folder for heat maps. And then we're going to click save. And what I will do now is export all the heat maps that you can assign to each landscape material within your Unreal Engine. Depending on what landscape material you're going to use, you can set that up to that particular landscape material within the Unreal Engine itself. And again, I'm using Unreal, uh, Brushify IO currently. And um, it works just fine. There's usually no errors. Okay, that's been done. And uh, that's it. You guys now have access to this landscape. I will be uploading this to Google Maps like I've already pre 
previously mentioned. And once again, I want to thank everybody for supporting me. And hopefully this landscape will be useful for practices or, you know, some particular projects that you want to work with. It's a pretty decent sized landscape. So who knows what you can create here if you ever use it. But uh, to get familiar with it within the World Creator 2 is very useful. And also practicing on how to import landscapes from World Creator 2 to Unreal Engine 4 or 5 now, since uh, we have a new version of the engine. And uh, that one, the Unreal Engine 4 uses world composition uh, with the particular layers and uh, sections of the level. Whereas Unreal Engine 5 uses a different technology now called Warp Partitions. So I don't know exactly how that works yet, but uh, I will be showing a video tutorial on how to convert your world composition levels to world uh, partitions. And um, But that will be just covered in a separate video. That being said, don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys in the next videos of my game development and updates. Until next time.